thanks very much. It's great to be here. Um, before I move to my presentation, I wanted to just say, uh, say a few things about the uh, SPA evidence, um, which we went through phase two. So right now we have over 35 uh, modalities that we're covering in terms of the evidence behind it. And we also added the, uh, the translator and um, a little tutorial that you can watch. I really invite all of you to go through this uh, great uh, source of information on evidence-based uh, therapies. And there are three ways for you to um, hook up to this from your own website. The first one is just create a, uh, you know, and we have all of that explained, but we have a, a link and a, a, a kind of a logo where you can embed that into your site and the users, when they click on that, they go into spyevidence.com. The other approach is do a, a private labeling, and we actually built spyevidence.com with that in mind, that you can actually do very easy private labeling and customization so that users on your site don't have to leave your site and everything is actually integrated within your brand uh, and, and site. And then the uh, third way is actually um, we have our a comprehensive platform, which we call GEMS, uh, Guest Experience Management System, which is a wellness platform that we use both for spas and for corporates. And this information is already embedded in there. So there's three ways of uh, going at it, depending on your needs and your business requirements. Uh, feel free to come talk to me or Dulce or uh, go to selfoptimal.com. So with that, let me talk to you a little bit about um, creating intimacy with technology. Um, let me see, where is the... Is it here? Hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so we talked about this. So I want to start by just uh, quickly go over the health spectrum. So down at the bottom is a sick zone, and of course, uh, Dr. Carmana talked about uh, this on Monday that really our system, our current modern system, is really focusing on sick care rather than health care. And up on the top, we have the optimum health zone, and that's not just lack of physical disease, is basically being at our optimum uh, performance across mind, body, spirit. Now, majority of the people are in the seemingly healthy region, but underneath their challenge with stress, sleep, nutrition, lack of exercise, exposure to toxicities, and if nothing is done proactively, of course, there is a tendency to go into the chronic region, and we all heard from uh, these last couple of days, that's, that's where all the troubles start, and that's where all the money goes into. Um, now, the, the cool thing is there is, um, this is a preventable and reversible uh, scenario, and we all talked about that, and I see this shift already happening. This shift toward a more holistic view of health and healing, and the shift through really working with the body to heal itself, to really stimulate the body's own healing mechanism. And I see spas and the healing resorts as the next sort of the wellness centers of the future. And, um, and this shift is happening. As more and more people experience this transformation, I think this paradigm shift is becoming more and more powerful. There's another um, related and complementary shift that's happening, and that, to me, is technology. And that's really the good use of technology to better human condition and experience. And I'm going to talk about that. So, you can think of internet as a, uh, a social and emotional web. There is amazing amount of information about the human condition. Um, preferences, needs, fantasies, everything is there. And this database is becoming bigger and bigger by the minute. In fact, a recent survey showed that uh, average teenager sends about 100 text messages a day. So that's our generation moving forward. Um, so what if we could extract human emotions out of this blob of information. There is a project called We Feel Fine that does exactly that. It's an emotional search engine, and its mission is to collect the world's emotions uh, in order to help people better understand themselves and others. And it's really what it does is goes, crawls all the web, all the blogs, micro blogs, um, social networking sites, and it searches for the phrase, I feel, or I'm feeling. And it attaches that emotional state to age, gender, and location. And it already, it actually was launched 2006, and it already has about 15 million emotions already in there. And um, I consider this making the collective unconscious conscious. So let's look at uh, some of the data here. 
this is a very happy conference. The reason I know this is because there's more women in this conference than men. And the data shows that women are happier by almost a factor of two. So, and happiness is contagious, so I'm really happy to be in this uh, environment here. Now, interesting to note is out of the most representative places where people feel depressed, Ontario, Canada comes up on the top by far, followed by Australia and England. Now, I did a little emotional search yesterday on Colorado, and I realized that it's a happy place. So it's a good thing. Now, for those of you who just don't feel good about getting old, there's some good news here. So, what, what, pardon? You're Any not yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the good news is that as, as, as people get older, there is significant reduction in expression of anger and sadness. And this chart are from 10 year old to 60 years old. Unfortunately, there's also a reduction in the surprise factor too. Now, on the day of Valentine, there is a um, sort of a recurring spike for people feeling loved and special right on the Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, there is a bigger spike of people feeling lonely, which actually starts a few days before Valentine's Day. Interesting observation. This is a picture of um, Aarhus Tower in, uh, in Denmark. The interesting thing about this tower is that it's lit up according to how the people of Denmark are feeling at any given time. It's very interesting. This, the nuns at this convent, this is St. Joseph Convent in uh, York, England, they call this little device prayer companion. So it's a little appliance with a little screen and these emotions come, come around. And these nuns use this device as a prayer inspiration. So they direct their prayers toward the people who are expressing these emotions that can be all around the globe. And they're actually using this. So ne next thing, I just want to uh, quickly talk about this another movement um, about this whole quantified self. Dr. Jay talked about that a lot, so I'm going to uh, move through this very quickly. And, um, and then, you know, sort of examine what it's, what it's bringing to our world. So some of these, um, some of these gadgets, like the, this wristband, uh, Fitbit, Zio, we talked about this, all about gathering information, tracking it, and, and in this case, activities, uh, calories burned, um, sleep, uh, and just keeps you on track. We talked about stress a lot in this last couple of days. Dr. Friedman talked about how um, stress blocks creativity. Uh, Alyssa talked about how stress reduces longevity. So this company, HeartMath, has put a lot of uh, research behind stress and found a connection between heart, mind, and stress. So this is a little gadget that it actually, um, you can change your heart rhythm and takes you to a, a coherent state or, or the zone where there is reduced emotional stress and, and ba increased balance. This is a little app. Uh, we talked about calorie counters. Things are getting even easier. You can take a picture of your meal. A few seconds later, it tells you what's in your food and how much calorie it is. And it's working, I have it. <laughs> this thing is very interesting. It's called intelligent pills. So there's a little um, sensor attached to these pills. They not only remind you if you forget to take them on time, not only they send a, a message that it's time to take your pill, but once you take it, it actually gets activated by the stomach's acidity. It's almost like a, um, like a, a potato um, battery. And it starts uh, monitoring local parameters like temperature or acidity. And it also tracks how the body is responding to this medication. I really see there's a couple of very interesting things coming into play with these gadgets. First, I think being able to track all of this information on an individual and mass level, you get to see trends and patterns. In fact, the Zio device, uh, it already has compiled the biggest database on sleep. 
and it already is finding some patterns about the differences between men and women in terms of the rapid eye movement stages of sleep. The other interesting thing is you can find correlations between these parameters, like how sleep can affect your weight or how stress can affect your immune system. These things will come up. I think these devices really are helping us to be more conscious, more aware, more present, and just be on our toes all the time. <laughs> so um, this fantasy of holo holographic telepresence uh, first appeared in Star Wars movie, 1977. That was when I actually came to the United States to uh, study. And that was when I uh, saw this um, movie. At that time, making an international phone call was very expensive, out of my budget. And uh, really, the, the next best thing was to write a letter. It took basically five to six weeks to get a response to my letters. Now, today, we have this reality. We have full size, full color, three-dimensional, and um, instantly. This fantasy turned into reality in less than 35 years. Uh, John actually uh, talked about the creative power of imagination. And I think every thought, every image that comes to our mind, every fantasy has creative powers. And it's all about time and intention to bring it into existence. How about um, Snow White's uh, magic mirror? So uh, I think some of you saw a little clip yesterday during lunchtime, which sort of gave you a feel on this. For those of you who are really interested to spend hours trying different clothes, this is your mirror. So it's actually implemented in a store in England. So it's, it's, these are all realities. These are not fantasies. So um, by the move of a hand, you can actually try different clothes, different colors, different sizes. You can even get a snapshot picture of your you know, clothes and send it to your Facebook friends to get some feedback right away. So this is all happening. Now, for those of you who don't feel external appearance is that important and what it counts is what's inside of you. Here's a mirror for you. It shows you your internal bone structures and your internal organs. This has been actually put together by a team of researchers in, uh, uh, in Munich, uh, Technical University of Munich, and uses uh, Kinect technology and um, computer tomography. Very interesting. Now, some of this technology is truly augmenting our skills and experience. Today, a person can be sitting in Aspen, a, a surgeon, let's say, a sitting in Aspen, doing an operation on a patient in India. And he's going to have more control and more precision with less invasiveness with this type of uh, technology. Some of you may know Oscar, also known as Blade Runner, He's a 25-year-old 20, uh, uh, South African who had both legs amputated when he was 11 months old. And he is um, he's the champion sprinter, and he's actually aiming to join the Olympic team this summer. This whole concept of augmented virtual reality first actually came into existence for the military training. So that's when you have this um, helmet on, on, you know, put on your head, and then you actually add external objects to it. But it looks similar to the reality. That's why it's called augmented reality. Now it's being used for healthcare reasons, for people who have, for example, some phobias and uh, really have trouble with things like um, spiders or cockroaches. So this thing brings these objects, fear objects, into the, uh, into the vision. And over time, it actually reduces their, uh, their phobia. The problem is that this type of uh, technology is very elaborate, and it sort of takes a lot of space. There's a little company in Washington that actually turning all of this equipment into a contact lens. So you put it on your, on your uh, eye, and you can go into augmented virtual reality. Amazing stuff. So. God created man and woman, and then man created the internet. And that's when God 2.0 was born. <laughs> I say born because it is, the internet is still in its infancy. It has already touched all of our lives. Wait until it grows up. Why do I call it God 2.0? Well, 
It speaks our languages. It's always present, always on 24 seven. It's all knowing. It knows what you have done exactly. It knows what you're doing now. And it even knows some of your intentions. It knows in a few weeks you're gonna go to Japan or you're gonna buy a book. It knows all of that. So with that, um, I wanna sort of mention what's, uh, what's all this mean to us. I think we're in this new era of personalization. I think with all of this information, it's an opportunity for, for, for us to know our guests or to, uh, to know our customers. It's about knowing your desires, their fears, their fantasies, and really by knowing that, we can bring value to them. We can be their trusted advisor. We can be their partner. And it's all about enhancing and transforming their experience. It's about bringing surprise factor and delight factor. It's about creating intimacy with technology. Thank you.